morning, everybody, and welcome to Simple Kitchen. I read on the uh, interwebs the other day that food YouTubers are very popular, so I decided we're changing formats. That's right, all cooking all the time now. So as you can see, I've gone to some of my favorite food YouTubers for inspiration. I've stolen my look from Andrew Ray and my hand motions, just like that. I've stolen my set design from Chef Frank, and I'm also going to be stealing all the jokes from Chef John. That's right, I am, after all, the Peter Eft of my intellectual property theft. So, without any further ado, let's get into how to make sunny side up eggs. That's what we're going to make today. So, going to need some basic tools for them. First up is a nonstick pan. Now, I know that, uh, the ceramic nonstick pans get a whole lot of hate here on YouTube. I love it. I love this pan. This is an 8 inch ceramic nonstick skillet. The actual cooking surface is about five and a half, six inches. That makes this perfect for two eggs. So with the eggs, I'm going to be using some pasture raised grade A large brown eggs two large brown eggs or two large eggs of any type are pretty much perfect for a morning with two sunny side up eggs. Into this ramekin is where I'm going to crack the eggs. Said that backwards, but you get the point. I'm going to crack the eggs into the ramekin. That way, in the unlikely event that I get any shells into the ramekin, I can fish them out. All right but maybe you don't want two eggs, you only want one, that's fine. You can also just do one egg if you would prefer to do that for your breakfast. So without any further ado, let's, oh. So let's talk about the, the pan itself. In addition to being nonstick, we still need to put something in here because the reason that food sticks to pans is because the proteins in the food adhere to the surface of the pan. And when the food releases, that's because the proteins have released from the pan. So what we need to do to help ensure that eggs, which are particularly prone to sticking, don't stick even though this is non-stick, we're going to put a little media in here to prevent that. I use butter. There are three basic options. Butter, animal fat, and vegetable fat, which would be oil. So with butter, I'm going to put the butter in and I'm going to let it melt. You can either put your eggs in as soon as it's melted, although I don't tend to like to do that because I find that the butter doesn't release quite as easily when I do. Or, if you want, you can also let the butter clarify a little bit. Let a lot of the water that's in it boil off. That's what I do, and I find that it gives the eggs a nice crispy base that also helps preserve the yolk inside of the eggs. The third option is to brown your butter. And that gives your eggs a nice nutty brown butter flavor. However, it also risks your butter getting a little bit too hot, which will cause your eggs to, to burn a little bit or get really crispy on the edges, which can be nice, don't get me wrong, the crispy edges, but also can cause you to get that bubbling texture, which is not really an appealing texture. And of course, a really hot pan will also help your eggs cook unevenly, which does not make for a great breakfast. With animal fat, bacon fat's easiest to come by. Beef tallow and duck fat are also good options. If you render out the fat from your bacon and save it, you can use the bacon fat for your eggs, and it is fantastic. Works just as well as butter. Gives your eggs a very nice bacony, salty flavor to them. There's also olive oil, canola oil, spray-on oil, things like that, which I've used all of them and have found that they consistently don't let the eggs release as well as butter and animal fat. Also, olive oil can add a little bit of a flavor to the eggs that may or may not be palatable, and if it gets too hot, that flavor can be very bitter. So I recommend not using the vegetable oils and instead going with one of the animal fats if unless you have a dietary restriction. So the next thing is you want to make sure that your oven is not too hot. You want to keep your range at a nice medium, slightly below medium heat, to prevent the eggs from talking. As Jacques Pepin said, if your eggs talk to you, the temperature is too hot. 
So keep the temperature nice and low. Now, let's get started. All right, so uh, let's pretend those eggs are brown, not white. That's, that's a very white shade of brown those eggs are. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off by separate, not separating, but breaking the eggs into the ramekin. And we're going to uh, put two large eggs in there as we discussed. That's gonna be what we use for the uh, sunny side up eggs. Now, oh, oh. That's, ah, uh, that's better. Okay, clean that, clean the stove top. Now, here's our frying pan. I'm gonna speed this up about four times so the butter melts just a little bit faster for you guys than it did for me. And uh, basically, that's round about a teaspoon of unsalted room temperature butter, and we're gonna let it melt down and we're gonna let some of that water bubble off. And that bubbling off of the water is really gonna make a huge difference in the texture of the underside and the perimeter of the sunny side up eggs when they're completed. And to my palate, at least in the way that I, the textures I enjoy in food, that works really, really well. Now we're gonna add the two sunny side up eggs to the hot butter. Adding, letting the butter get hot at minimum before adding the eggs will give you better release. I'm adding salt now. I don't add salt while the eggs are in the ramekin because salt can cause the whites of the eggs to become a little bit chewy and I don't want that to happen so I'd like to add the salt a bit later. This is paprika and some of the variations of eggs that I make will use Berber or Harissa. Berber is an Ethiopian spice and Harissa is a hotter, I believe it's an African spice as well. Traditionally, both of those are made into pastes before they're used, but sprinkling Berber or Harissa on top of eggs like the paprika there gives them a really nice flavor. The Berber is very earthy with a little bit of bitterness and heat. And of course the, oh hey, emu egg. And then of course the uh, harissa is just really, really hot and flavorful. Again, so uh, again, emu egg, by the way, if you just want one egg, is a good option. Emu eggs are exceedingly tasty and very, uh, very fun to cook with. And they have a really nice consistency and texture. Anyway, back to the actual eggs that we're talking about. After they've cooked a little bit, you can shake the frying pan. You can see that they are not releasing. That means, of course, that they're not done. This is not time to grab the spatula and start scraping. That will just damage the eggs. So I spun it around there a little bit, and that was just enough for them to release in a little bit more cooking time. And now that they're released, every now and then I'll come in and just give them a nice little spin and that will make sure that the butter stays underneath them evenly and uh, also helps to get the eggs into different parts of the pan so that they cook more evenly. What we're looking for, of course, with sunny side up eggs is a cooked white with a soft and runny yolk. And while this might look a little bit under to you, it isn't. It's actually really, really perfect. It's just more done than most diners. So this is what that those eggs looked like in the final uh, uh, assembly. This is a different set of eggs. This used Berber on top. But uh, you could also some fresh cracked pepper, white pepper, red or green pepper also work really well on these. Another variation I like to do is putting herbs in the butter. That's a little bit too much butter, but with herbs in the butter before you cook the eggs, it's a good idea to have more butter because they're gonna absorb it. It, it can spatter a little bit, the fresh herbs. So putting fresh herbs will infuse the butter with the flavor of that fresh herb. That's roux the herb. It's also called herb de grace here in the U.S. And it's a, a very, it's a popular Ethiopian, well, it's an Ethiopian herb that I believe is popular in Ethiopia. And it's used in the Berber mix that I also really like to use on my eggs. And so putting the roux into the butter like this and using it to sort of paint the butter around the frying pan really gives the butter that earthy, that uh, roux flavor. 
Tarragon is another herb that works really beautifully in this way, as well as fresh thyme and rosemary. And so now we're just going to put the eggs back in exactly like we did with the other process. But, but giving the butter that flavor of the herb helps it to really cook into the eggs and really uh, gives them a very nice dimension to their, their flavor. That's some fresh cracked red and green pepper there, um, which really also brings a nice floral note to the eggs. And here's the Berber powder that I was talking about that I'm just going to sprinkle on like paprika. Instead of making it into a paste, I apologize to all of my Ethiopian listeners that I did not make it a paste first. That uh, our, my, my Berber shaker is <laughs> gets a lot of use, so it's a little bit clogged right now. Anyway, there now the Berber is on. There are some other variations I also like to do. I'll put, like I said, harissa is a good one. Fresh or frozen uh, freeze-dried chives are another really good thing to put on that I enjoy putting on to my eggs a lot. Really, any sort of fresh herb, parsley will brighten your eggs. Cilantro, if you in like that, if it doesn't taste like soap to you. Things like that really go above and beyond. So the sunny side up eggs themselves are not the be all and end all of eggs. They're more a vehicle for interesting ways to add flavor to your eggs so that you can enjoy it. You know what I forgot to do guys? I forgot to get video of me cutting these open to show you what it looks like. So we're just going to have to end here before the outro with a couple of photos of the the uh, the chive variants of the eggs. Yes, did not did not film the cutting open. All right, everybody, that was cooking sunny side up eggs and a whole bunch of different variations on the sunny side up egg. So as you've probably figured out by now, this was of course an April Fool's Day joke. I'm having you on a little bit. Tomorrow we'll have another hike log. We'll be back on brand tomorrow. And next week we'll have some more on brand videos that uh, I don't even know what they're gonna be yet. So Simple Kitchen is done for the year. I'll be back next year on April Fool's Day to make everybody say, he can't possibly think he's getting away with the same April Fool's Day joke twice in a year, can he? Yes, I can think that. So until next year, when we do something like talk about, um, I don't know, how about cast iron Dutch baby pancakes with blueberry blackberry compote? Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Anyway, from my knife to your belly, have a good brunch. So in today's video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off by looking at how to make, I forgot. I forgot. Sunny side up eggs. <laughs> this is going so badly. <laughs>